Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over 6.4. 6.4 is the introduction to continuous random variables and their probability distributions. So, so far we've looked at discrete, uh, discrete random variables, such as the binomial, which counts the number of successes, or if we've looked at certain profit situations, those are all discrete outcomes. Now we're looking at continuous outcomes, and looking at their probability distributions. And the most popular probability distribution we're going to look at that's continuous is the normal distribution, which is the bell curve. If we've seen that before from the empirical rule, uh, we've looked at the normal distribution uh, a little bit already. So main thing we just want to be clear on is remember we're doing continuous variables now, not discrete, so we're not counting them. And uh, uh, we're going to look at the distribution of the normal curve. So first and foremost, a continuous probability distribution is it deals with continuous variables. So your height could have been a continuous random variable. If I start sampling heights from the from the class, that height is technically continuous because the, the how tall you are it can fall anywhere between uh, anywhere between say I don't know forty inches and hundred inches. So there's no gap between the values of heights. You can be any value of height between uh, any interval. So that's what we're talking about with continuous. The other thing is, is since um, continuous values are very hard to pinpoint, we're not actually going to look at the probability of getting one particular value, but we're going to look at the probability of either being above a particular value, below a particular value, or in between two values. And that's what this says at the end. Okay. So for any continuous probability distribution, we'll be able to draw a density curve. And the total area under that curve is 1. That's very the same thing as the law of total probability. Remember, the sum of all the probabilities must equal 1. So now the area underneath the curve is going to represent a probability. And the total area underneath the curve must add up to 1. So the other thing is the vertical height of the density curve can never be negative. That's basically saying that the probability of any observation has to be between 0 and 1. It can't be less than 0. But the continuous distribution that we're going to look at the most are normal probability distributions. So this is what we have here, the bell curve. And we're going to get into some uh, important facts that you need to remember about the, the normal probability distribution. The reason why we spend so much time with the normal probability distribution though is because many many data sets and uh, observations out in the real world end up being what's called normal or bell-shaped heights SAT scores uh, weights um, a lot of things eventually fall into a normal distribution so let's just be clear on the properties uh, it is symmetric about the mean in other words it means that the the mean is in the middle of the bell curve the highest point occurs at the mean. You can see that from the picture. The total area under the curve is 1. And so then if the area under the curve is 1 and the mean is, is in the middle, then the area to the left of the mean must be 0.5 and the area to the right of the mean must be 0.5. The other thing uh, that's important here is that the normal de distribution is defined for values of x extending indefinitely in both the positive and negative directions meaning that this curve never actually touches the x-axis, it never ends. It can go off towards positive infinity on the right and negative infinity on the left. However, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, meaning that the probability, the area underneath that curve, gets very, very slim and very, very, uh, very, very small. So while it is possible to be, I don't know, five standard deviations above the mean, it will be very unlikely because the area above the curve at that point is very small. And then uh, the, the x values are always on the horizontal axis and probabilities are always going to be represented inside the curve. That's going to be a good distinction to make because remember the number line follows properties from small to big. Area follows the rules of being between 0 and 1 and the total area equaling 1. Now we go from the normal distribution to the standard normal distri distribution. Notice, for any normal distribution like we did on exam one, you put the mean in the middle and then you started counting off standard deviations because we were using the empirical rule. 
Well, we're going to stop using the empirical rule and uh, use the standard normal distribution instead. So this, this is the most important normal distribution because any normal distribution, whether it be heights or weights or SAT scores, can be standardized by using a z-score. Remember the z-score for the mean? It's equal to zero because the, when, the mean, when you take the mean and you subtract the mean in the formula, you get zero. Then we have one standard deviation above, two, and three standard deviations above, one, two, three standard deviations below. Notice the area to the left of the mean is still 0.5, and the area to the right of the mean is still 0.5, and the mean of the standard normal distribution is always zero. So remember, this is, these are just z-scores down here. All right, so the standard normal distribution uses z-scores, and z-scores are what help us eventually find areas underneath this curve, and that's what the next lesson is going to be about. However, um, in order to do all the problems that we're going to do involving bell curves, whether it be probability or finding a data value, we're going to need to go through this z-score process, and that will get us at the standard normal distribution. So that's the end of this lecture. We're going to work on finding areas uh, from the standard normal distribution in the next presentation. We'll see you then.